Okay, everybody ready to get going here? <laughs> yes, the commentary, why I couldn't do a zip file? May have used the max amount of space. I don't think so. It seemed to be some other error. Actually, I was getting a web page interface error, which was making me think they didn't like the format I was using. Anyhow, let's talk green screen. That's what we're here for tonight. Or at least the first half of the class, at least. A green screen is basically creating a transparency. Uh, basically, for a class, I would start with this image. And I would then take a background, such as this. I like to start with still images so that um, you know, we don't have to worry about everything moving when we first start talking about this. Now, first and foremost, so here's the thing is, the idea behind green screen is to get rid of, obviously, the green. But it's more to it than that. And I want to see this is the red background that we're going to have so you, the audience can see what's going on. When you, my voice is very choppy. Okay, I will try to move my microphone and see how we do there. See if that's any better. Let's rotate the mic a little bit. Better, better. Okay, well, let that go and see how it goes. When you approach a green screen issue, you, everyone is a puzzle. You have to puzzle these things out. For example, we have filters that get rid of this green, make it transparent. Basically, it's turning it into an alpha channel. But then we also run into situations like this on the long left-hand side, which is literally stuff. This is not green. You know, and this is in the real world, this is what you're going to bump into is not everybody can have a soundstage size green screen. You normally are dealing with little AB green screens. So you have to approach this and go, okay, how do you get rid of this stuff on the left-hand side? Well, the easiest way is literally to use a mask, which is our old-fashioned pin or square tool. And with the mask, you just go around, make a closed path, and I made a shape layer rather than a mask. Good. Try that again. And that got rid of all the stuff on the left-hand side because it's hidden by the mask. There's another thing that goes on with the mask here, which is quite simply, the next filter that we're going to do to apply to get rid of the green, uh, if we have a mask like this, there's less pixels for it to deal with, so it'll run your computer a little bit faster. It's a minor point, but back you know in the days, this was a really important step. So we would actually create these things. Now these sort of masks, we often hear the terminology, a garbage mask. And it's a garbage mask because we really don't care all that much how accurate this is. As a matter of fact, we don't want it to be accurate. We're just doing it to get rid of all the excess that's not green screen for us. Okay, now how do we get rid of this? Well, basically in After Effects, we use one filter. Under Effects, Keying, which is another term for green screen work. They often will hear the word key. And there's our outer, inner outer key. But we, the tool we really want is this thing one called Key Light. This thing is a workhorse. It does amazing amount of th things. Now, first and foremost, I want to get my magnifier going again. There we go. That way I can zoom in. Is you want to be aware of the what they call the view. Because from this, we can see different outputs of what we're about to do. From the source video to the source alpha and all these other things, including the default, which is the final result. One of the good things things to be good at green screen work is jumping between those. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now, below the drop-down menu, we also have the thing called screen color. It has a little eyedropper. We also have a picker, which we can pick a color. Now, first and foremost, you should know that this uh, tool will use any color. It doesn't have to be a true green screen, okay? 
Now, why do we use green? Okay, there's several reasons why green was chosen. One is this particular co color of chroma key green is actually, if you recall, our c cameras are set to RG red, green, blue, right? Well, the green, this tone is 100% saturation, which the camera accepts. Now, the other reason, so it's obviously very friendly, the color green is very friendly to the camera. The other thing that, about this color green is it's the farthest away from skin tones that you can get. I could technically use this tool and get rid of reds and stuff, but then I might run the risk of making people's skin look transparent and stuff. Okay, so that's why green is used, and when green cannot be used, blue is used instead. Okay, you'll notice to the right of screen color is an eyedropper. And if you come over here and just select a little bit of the green, bingo, look at that. And you sit there and go, wow, not too shabby. Now, before we go any further, I do want to say this about green screen. First and foremost, being good at green screen work is an art. Okay, it really is. You have to have a good eye for this. You got to be able to pay attention to little AV details because right now that looks okay, but it really isn't that good. Okay, we have to do a lot more work with it. I should also point out that the college has a 16 week course on doing compositing. So if you really want to get into this, I recommend taking that class. Okay, so let's talk about this. I successfully took out that color green, but let's take a closer look. If we were to look at the alpha channel, the source alpha, uh, you can see that's the source, which is my mask and stuff. Screen matte, which is, there's my true alpha ch color. Remember way back when we started talking about alpha channels with Photoshop, what did I say? Anything that's black is transparent. Anything that's white, or 100% white, 100% black, 100% white, is solid. And anything in between, you'll notice that actually we have shades of gray in there. Meaning, despite the fact that it looked okay on final results, we actually have some red bleed coming in through that because we don't have 100%. Don't have 100%. That 100% that white that was and black. Green initially? What, this black and white? No. Yeah, the parts that are a little bit black and then have... The yeah, there's a little bit... Okay, yeah, you're absolutely correct. They're describing it that way. So when I chose to get rid of the green, this had a little bit of green bleed in it. Now, that might be from the green bounce. One of the things you do when you shoot green screen work, which is a very tricky thing to do, is... Go back to the source. Is when you hit lights on that green, you get a lot of bounce back. So the green light bounces onto your actors. This is normally why you try to set your green screen farther away from them so you don't get as much bounce back. So, how do we fix this? Well, first and foremost, again, this drop down menu is your life. You know, you have to sit there and really see what's going on and being willing to zoom in. There's another down here drop down menu, not drop down, excuse me, spin out. Come in here and zoom in a little bit. Under screen mat, there's a lot of different choices here, but the top two are the ones that you use the most. Clipping black and clipping white, which allows you to alter the 100% black and 100% white. If you are used to using levels in Photoshop and Illustrator Photoshop, this is what that comes from. So if I were to go into I can't bring it up. Mm -hmm. Levels. This is the levels. I wouldn't use this, but you know how you can crush the whites and blacks? Where basically you're telling it, even though this is 90% black right here, you're saying, no, everything beyond this point is 100% black, and everything to the right of this is 100% white. So you're narrowing the range of gray. Now I can get rid of that. <laughs> Come back here, you. 
So if we clip the black and clip the white, we can sit there and go, OK, I'm going to move over that slider. You can see I'm getting rid of that bounce, and I'm getting 100% to creating that. If your green screen is not perfect, you may need to increase the black to make it more black. But you got to be careful about doing this. Notice the little hairs along the right-hand side here. If I do it too much, I'm missing out on that. This is where, again, this is an art form. So I go to final results. I can take a look at it and play with it a little bit more. So I have to bounce back and forth. Now the other problem that you bump into if you play with this too much, you get into too much of an edge. Whoops, too far. And you can see that you're creating a little darkness there. Now we can play with the screen shrink and grow here. And this is where decimal points really do matter. You know, you have to often sit here and go 0 0.5, 0 0.4. That way I want a negative 0.4. Anyhow, you got to sit there and really get in there and play with it until you find the right mix. Most beginning students, when I do uh, show them this, they become very, very frustrated because one of the things about it is if you've ever seen a movie or TV show about making movie or TV shows, they show like people pushing a couple of mouse buttons, you know, a couple of buttons on the keyboard and it's a perfect green screen. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. It was probably days of work to do that sort of thing. So you need to, be, you know, spend some time with this. And also, do not beat yourself up if you can't do it perfectly. I've had students go, I've worked on this for 10 minutes, and it's not perfect yet. It's like, yeah, professionally, we might spend an entire day with so, just one shot, if not more, depending on the complexity. So, you know, again, this is an art form you have to learn to play with all these crazy settings to get in there. If I didn't say it early enough, this is an overview of green screen work, okay? Just to give you a taste and get you started with it. There's, you know, our 16-week course really covers this in depth, okay? Now, one of the other things that you can do also, to, if you have an edge issue, is there's a thing here called screen pre-blur, which is outside the mask, where you can increase or decrease this. And basically, it plays with the edge of this just a hair to soften it and sometimes makes it look better, etc. Now, because this is not uh, video, it's not going to move hit play and stuff. But you could make our actress, you know, even a still image, walk across the screen, etc., etc. That's the whole point of green screen work, is to be able to take this and then put it anywhere into any shot we want to. Okay? But what I just showed you is the very, very basics. And that's what you spend the most time with, is choosing, you know. By the way, yes, this will take, if you had a white sheet, shot yourself against it, you could use this tool to make that white uh, transparent in alpha channel and be a green screen. But the problem is, you know, human skin is very close to that, so you would also bump into the issues of dealing with getting that, you know, taking it out. Okay. Now that I've got that one, let's try that again. I, like I said, normally we all spend a lot of time in class doing this. I'm going to come down here. And I've got ten seconds, two seconds. Okay, I've got two things here. One is this road and I've got this truck. So my background is this and my foreground is obviously is it just a hair. Okay, obviously shot on sound stage. Much con more controllable than shooting on the real street. Once again we're going to go up to effects, keying, choose the la layer first, effects, 
keying, key light, or friend, hit the eyedropper, hit bang. Again, that looks pretty good, you think, when you first start off. But the moment you look at the screen mat, you can see problems. Once again, we got bleed. That yellow has a lot of green in it. Also, look up here at the actual the green screen itself. Very seldom do you get a perfect green screen where one click gets rid of it. You have all this other stuff. Now, I could mask it out, but I wanted to actually, in this case, again, play with the clipping of the blacks. So make those shades of gray more black. Then come down to the white. Go the other direction. Again, you got to play with it and make sure you're not doing too much too little. You know, because one of the things we do risk is if we clip the white too much, the truck will become transparent. <laughs> the whole thing will wipe out on us. So you want to play with it. As a matter of fact, now that I've got it back set up at 200%, you can actually see the road coming through of it. So going back, 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 back. Keep playing with it. But again, your screen mat. We see 100% white, you know you're in good territory there. But you often, even then, you have to play with this. you got to sit there and go, does it look good? Where are my problems? Am I seeing things? And do pay close attention to the edges, because that is where you're going to run into issues and problems. Okay? So far, so good, right? When it comes right down to it, green screen work, again, is not, the concept and even the execution is not hard. It's the time spending with it is what's going to take you a lot of time and getting all these things put together. All right, let's do this with some actual Honest to God video now. Okay, I've got this thing called Tracking Movie. And I've got this thing called Hill Background. So I've got my, this is what I want in the background. And there's my video. This really is video, so let's sit here and go. The first thing you always want to do with any green screen footage is analyze it. You have to sit there and before you even start, it goes, what are the problems I'm going to bump into? So I need to be aware of them. First and foremost, obviously, she's wearing a green colored tank top. That's going to have a huge impact on us. Also, notice over here in the background, we've got a big blue dot. Don't worry about that. I'll come back to that in a minute. As a matter of fact, we'll be talking about that with um, tracking information in a little bit. But the other problem we have is it's not a big green screen. Again, this is perfectly common. First and foremost, on the start, we have it on the right-hand side. We have nothing. And then on the left-hand side, later on, we have nothing more. Again, we also have the problem of this is not a perfect green screen. You've got a lot of folds and creases. Those dark edges really do matter. That's not the same green that we're going to select you know, with our eyedropper. That's all going to change. Okay, and finally, the other problem that we have is what? This is a handheld shot. You know, this is a pain. This means we're going to have to do an extra couple steps. And that's why that blue dot is there, is so that we can use it later on. Okay, but let's do the green screen first. This is where we want to start. Okay, once again, we just, you know, click on the correct layer. And actually, the first place we're going to start is we're going to start with a mask. I'm going to take my little pen tool, and once again, I'm going to do a garbage mask. I do not want to be super tight. Why? Because this is going to be moving. I mean, as we go through, you can see that we're going to have issues right away. So no matter how I draw this, you know, there's a nice handheld move of losing your other arm. So, because masks can be animated, we back it up. Get out of the pen tool. And this is where all that practice. Remember when I first showed you masks way back at like class two and three? I said you'd have to really get used to this. Well, this is, a, here it is back again. So I keyframe the path itself and I move forward a little bit. And I can already see I've got issues. Oops, I don't want to move the whole thing. So I. Blank and blank area. Go that 
there. There we go. And I'm going to move that way over because I know she's moving that direction. And I back it up, just double check. I didn't miss anything. See, this is where the time comes in. You gotta just sit there and play with it. Her shoulder's about to get hit. Let's move that out. Her head. Oops. Back it up. Didn't do it enough. There we go. Oops. So you can see the mistake. Lower arm there. I can just move that out. It doesn't matter how many keyframes it takes. You just got to make sure that the actor and actress stays in the shot. You can't even pull this out of the shot. And maybe I should have done that earlier. Coming around. Okay. You can see why we call this a garbage mask. Now, I really don't want that blue there because that's going to interfere with key light. So as that starts to come in, I got to once again pull this in back in. And this is where it's going to get a little tricky because notice I've got hair and that blue. So I don't want to do too much. Again, never be afraid to zoom in. I just don't want to see that blue dot. And I don't want to cut off any hairs either. Okay, that's not too bad. Fit. Okay, so let's see how that my garbage mat is going. Did I miss any spots? It's not uncommon to go back and fix this again and again and again until you got it right. Doing this right the first, you know, takes time but you know, it will save you work down the road. The other thing is, notice because I do keep it reasonably tight around here, I have less the green screen to deal with, so I have less shadows, less uh, wrinkles and stuff. Okay. <laughs> I was about to ask why, if it makes it so easy. Again, because this is an art form. The people who specialize in doing this are really good. They're able to spot little things that most of us miss and stuff. So the garbage mat, I think, works. I don't have any issues with it per se. A little worried about that hair, but I can always come back and fix that later. So come back here. Back to key, for, key light. This thing, again, I'm just, I know there's an automatic because it always remembers the last filter you use, but I'm just, again, showing you. FX keying key light. I'm going to grab my little eyedropper. Bang. And let's see how it looks without any changes. Can you guys already see the changes? <laughs> Are the things I have to fix? Is what do you think that uh, Alpha Channel is going to look like when I bring it up? Yeah, it's going to have some issues. Screen mat, yep, you can see it. Ah, background moving weird, uses on hands. We'll come back to those two things. Good call, but we, the other thing about doing anything like this in After Effects, my advice simply is to focus on one thing at a time. Don't try to fix everything simultaneously because that will drive you nuts. So let's go ahead and just fix the uh, alpha channel here. So we go back into the Screen mat. Okay, want to get rid of that? Those wrinkles. We're going to increase the black a hair. And again, don't be afraid to use decimal points with this stuff. The difference between 10 and 10.5 can be immensely. Now we have to try to fix that green tank top, and it's like, thank you so much for wearing that actress. Honestly, couldn't we have chosen a different color? Again, you want to be really careful. If I take too much of it, I'm going to start losing her hair and stuff. 
The other thing about this is as they move, these numbers might change. You may have to keyframe this. I have seen shots that were so badly lit that they actually had to like keyframe every other frame because of the weird bouncing and stuff. Sure about that. We are getting the hairs and stuff. You can see that blue dot in the Alpha Channel stream. <laughs> How close I cut it, but that might be enough. All right, let's see what it looks like in the final. There's times I think I've just done this so many times that I just go faster. Her arms do need some work. we are getting into that territory there. Let's see. Yeah, you have to clip the white just seventy-eight. Ah, you can see. Oops, wrong way, Eric. I was Habits, bad habits sometimes. A little bit better. Now we can spend a lot of time, you know, it's one of these things with classes. It's like I could spend like an hour trying to get everything perfect, but that's not the purpose of tonight's class. We're not going to be doing that now, uh, just because I would want to show you other options, another video. Excuse me. As well, notice also there's that edge there. So we might want to do a blur one. No, minus one. Minus one, 1. 1.5. Okay, that's the idea of the pre screen blur is to soften the pixels. Do a little thing there, which is not the solution for this one. So we're going to use the shrink grow and go down like 0.1. A little too much, too little. There we go. 1.7. 1.5. That's looking a little bit better. Not getting that sharp edge there. So we're getting closer. Again, we could play with a lot of other choices here. And I'm only touching the surface at this point, uh, a lot of the options going on. So I want to, again, emphasize, you know, obviously if we were doing this in class, we'd be spending a lot more time. Um, Nah, let's not do that. <laughs> now I'm getting into now I'm trying to just show off. Anyhow, so let's talk about the shot itself, okay? We could spend more time with trying to get it perfect, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, have, I have some students who said, well, there's a nasty shadow coming across her face. It's like going, well, actually, that's not an unusual thing. Uh, you know, if a character is outdoor, even indoors, you know, poles, lights, there should be shadows from time to time going across people. So that's not a real issue. Now it is an issue with the green screen in the sense of, um, you know, we have, it changes the lighting of course, but it is just something to be aware of. Just to tell you a quick little story. Uh, when I was, yes, I went to film school. Or, you, know, um, you know, in our lighting class, we did this beautiful 
shot had all these lights hanging of basically a simple shot of a guy walking down the classroom hallway, turning into the classroom, etc. And we spent a lot of time, we thought we had it perfect. And, you know, after we showed the footage, the teacher pointed out, goes, you did a very good job of lighting. There's like not one shadow anywhere in your shot. And then he paused and go, is that realistic? In a classroom, should it be that clean? Shouldn't there be shadows and things like that? So things to think about. Now, the bigger problem with this shot comes back to the fact that this is a handheld shot. Okay, or I should say she is, and the background is perfectly still. If these two characters, the photograph of the city and our actress here, were actually shot at the same time, the background should be re reacting exactly the same as it, our actress. So when the camera goes left, right, up, down, the background should be moving as well. Okay? So, how do we fix this and what do we do about it? All right. This gets into what we discussed last class, which was tracking. We have to track the her or the camera movement. Remember that uh, Remember that blue dot way back at the beginning? That's what that blue dot was put there for. It was a tracking marker, a very primitive one, but it was designed to do that. Now, could we have tracked our shot before, you know, doing all this masking and green screen stuff? The answer is, yeah, we could have. But where's the fun in that? So, again, this comes into problem shoot, you know, troubleshooting and problem solving. How do we manage to track that information after we've done all this work because we don't want to undo it? Well, quite simply, we can simply go to the project file, grab our video, bring it back down to the timeline again. Because these are the two exact si you know, frame for frame shots, we can use the secondary copy to track that blue dot for us. Now again, remember last class when I talked about tracking, we also want to make sure that we can put the keyframe somewhere. So we're going to use again a null object. So we're going to put all the tracking information from this layer of the unchanged one and put it onto the null layer itself. So basically the null layer will track that blue dot for us. So again, to, in order to do this, I basically come down to the tracker. And I want to choose tracker. Come on. Put this side by side. There we go. I want to track the motion. So I make sure I'm clicked on the correct video. Track motion. Puts me into the layer section. Not the composition, but the layer. There's my tracking point. So I grab this, move it over. And that's a really nice contrast. So I'm going to stretch this out. So it's going to cover the entire thing. Okay. I don't have to worry, but there's no rotation, no scaling. The camera's not moving forward, backwards. It's not tilting all that much. That's not a big deal. My target is going to be my null point, which is good. I'm at 0, 0, 0, so I tell it to go forward. And it will now start tracking for me. And we'll just see how bad of a cameraman this was, how unsteady he was putting this together. But you can see what a heavy memory hog, you know, it's even slogging down my computer. If you haven't guessed, by the way, Tracking and green screen work is time consuming, very time consuming. So if you're going to start practicing with this, you're going to have to allow yourself the time to do this. Okay. It can be done. It's just, again, very time consuming. And I think we're getting almost to the end. And that will probably be a fairly good track. But you can see right now how much that camera 
wandered. But again, that looks like a very good track, so I hit apply. Right, left, up, down, you betcha. Put that on to the null point. And if we look at the null point, there is a keyframe, literally, for every single frame tracking that. That's how much motion there was. So, good news. This video, Untouched, which we tracked, I just hit the little eyeball. It's gone. I then take my null point, which can be on any location, and I don't tell it the hill background to become the child of the null point. So now this video, this still image, the JPEG, will move whenever the null point moves. Can you see what a difference that makes already? This is why I covered tracking before <laughs> green screen, just to demonstrate. This is a very, very common thing that we have to do. But you can see what a difference it really makes by having that hill back moving, you know, the hill background here moving. It just really adds it, it makes it part of the scene. Now, one of the reasons we use the null point is we could have easily have put the keyframes onto the JPEG, but my problem is this. Look at how big that photograph really is, actually. I can now go in, because I'm not, I don't have to worry about keyframes on this layer, I can go in and adjust this giant photograph, because it's really high res, to wherever I want it to. So I can say, do I want to have more sky, less road? How do I want this to look? What looks natural? Do I want more of that shot or more of the hill? You know, and then you, of course, get into the situation I just did. You look at that and go, whoops, nada. I'm going to slide it over. You still want it bigger than, <laughs> so it can actually have space to move. Now there's a lot more to do with this and, than we just discussed because we also have to, you know, think about, I mean, obviously going to color correction, she's too bright compared to the, uh, you know, background and stuff, do a lot of little color corrections and things like that. It's a whole process. It's a very, you know, like I said, very, very time consuming. Just to make it you know, come together. Okay, before I go racing off, what do you guys think? Is common use 2D backgrounds for films and green screen? Yep, extraordinarily common. <laughs> You'd be shocked how much. Um, um, <laughs> how much Photoshop work is actually done in 3D movies and stuff. It's a, uh, one of the most common things on the planet. Often what we'll do, though, is we will make this 3D and we'll, like, put, have a JPEG in the background and, like, a lamppost using our Z space in between to give us that depth of field. You know. And, yes, having a 2D background is much easier than this. To give you an idea, when I first started working um, in the industry, I was working, I worked at Sony Imageworks, and this is going to show you my age. Uh, we were working on the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, particularly the second one with Doc Ock. But we had a team of 10 people doing nothing but Photoshop work to create the backgrounds of the streets of New York. Okay, think of that, 10 people just doing Photoshop painting in and adjusting every brick, everything. It was a very <laughs> lengthy process. So, yeah, Photoshop work is done on very, very professional films, guys. You know, it's just added, you know, layer upon layer. But basically, professionally speaking, what you do is when you're, you know, before you start shooting a film, films are broken down into sets and scenes, and decisions are made at that time of what's the fastest way of doing something. 
if I had two people in a, um, you know, at a, you know, table, just having a meal, talking back and forth, you know, I could shoot that on green screen and just have 2D, you know, kitchen, you know, backgrounds of walls and things like that. I don't need a full set. Just one of those things, you know. Okay, no, I did not get my name on any of those movies. I worked on a lot of things at Sony, and I didn't get my name into because I wasn't in the union. So, nope, I'm not in IMDb. Sorry, guys. Or if I am, somebody put me there because I didn't put myself. Yep, sorry. And stuff. And regrettably, uh, for smaller, well, ImageWorks is not a small company, but, you know, here's the funny thing is whenever you sit there and uh, – look at the mile of names at the end of a motion picture and go, oh my God, look at how many people work on this. There are actually more than that <laughs> normally. There's a lot of people who go uncredited. And that's one of the things you just have to get used to. <laughs> okay, let's not get into a political fight here, guys. All right. Yes, unions can be important. And let's not pick on the police union tonight because I do not want to start a fight in class. Okay? So, no political stuff tonight. Thank you. But I do want you all to stay safe safe and healthy. Okay, any other questions so far? I did start and just knock that out like a crazy person. But, you know, I did want to give you guys some time to watch the process. <sighs> La, la, la. I'm sm Max, I'm smart enough not to answer that question. Really? Yeah, that would probably be me then. God, what movie did they <laughs> are they crediting me with? What was I doing back then? I did not do Midnight to Paris, but I did, yeah, I did work on Invasion Earth. I worked on several Tim Burton films and other ones back then. Uh, After Effects is used very commonly. There are other tools, by the way, besides that. And also there's other, other than key light, there are also other plugins. You can buy better filters than the basics. But this will get you started. Key light is very, very powerful and it will uh, work for you every single time. The uh, compositing class uses a piece of software called Combustion. I also believe they touch on um, After Effects as well. But um, there's other tools available to us. But the basic concept is the same thing no matter what you come to. Come on, stop there for a second. When it comes down to it is this. We're still making an alpha channel. That's what we're doing. From Photoshop up to After Effects, this is what we're doing. The only advantage of this is with video, key light lets us do it, <laughs> you know, for, does a tremendous amount of the work for us. So it's all very fun in that respect. Much big, much more fun and stuff. Go back to final. Okay. Now, changing the subject just a little bit. Let's do, let's buy some grass. And bison. Okay, we're going to do a blue screen next. Uh, Max asked the question, is Key Light only in After Effects or is it in Final Cut Premiere? It would not be in Final Cut because it is exclusive to Adobe. I do not know. There is some uh, masking tools in Premiere, but I'm not sure if it, this one's specifically in it in the, off the top of my head. Final Cut has its own version of it, uh, which you can use as well. But getting back to the topic, just to demonstrate that the tools work with whatever color. Okay, once again, this is really short, but this is one of the reasons I chose this clip, is we've got this. And like always, and 
whatever you do, again, look at your footage first and then start analyzing where the problems are going to come up and stuff. Okay, it's so a couple of problems. Obviously, we're going to have to use a mask to get rid of that. You know, handlers want there to get the buffalo, the bison, to turn its head, which is fine. There's our blue screen, which is okay, but we also have an issue here with the ground because obviously the blue screen is not going to work there, uh, or we're not going to be able to do it simultaneously. So my advice, once again, is to do what? Is to take it one problem at a time. Okay, obviously we have a lot of junk around here plus the trainer, so the first place to start, nine times out of ten, is always with a mask. So I'm going to just sit here, make a simple mask, and i got to be careful around that point because that moves a lot. Not to mention that the bison moves his head. And there we go. That's a good start in the sense of we have definitely got, you know, a lot of things going on here. So I'm going to hit M for mask, keyframe that, and then to hit play. I'm just going to see where my problems re reside. And you can see right now he's going to clip his nose, etc. So I want to go play with it right about there. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Move this out. Oops. There's that pole. Again, you got to be really careful, and this is why you got to zoom in when you do these things. Move, move, move. A few frames. Let's move that up. See, I'm just doing it a little bit of time as I'm going through it. I want to give some breathing space in there, but I got to be careful where that pole is. And actually, I'm going to back it up. Why? Because I just noticed the top of his head's a little cut off. So give him some breathing room. Yeah, that's the last keyframe we really need on that one. So I'm going to double check myself. Because you always, see, you always want to double check or triple check your work. Okay, so that's a good start. So from there, we want to then tackle the next problem, which is the blue screen itself. So once again, click on here, effects, keying, key light. All right, key light, back it up. Hit the light dropper, bang. Not too bad, but it's still a little bit off. But notice again, even though it's blue, key light works just fine. It will take any color you want. But once again, I gotta go into my screen mat. Yeah, the problem's in the black, isn't it? So I back that, increase that, get that down. Play with the whites, just a hair. You can see the little edge of the. <laughs> there we go. I think we're okay. Let's see how that looks. Not too bad. I think I may want to pre-blur that just a few pixels. All right. What do you guys think? Reasonably good? Okay. So we have two other issues to deal with. One is the ground, obviously, his feet. And the other thing is, on the original video of the background, you may notice there's a problem. There's a boom mic up here. It's not part of the buffalo footage. It's part of the grass footage. So that's something we have to deal with as well. So how do we deal with that? Well, several options. One is I could, I could you know, mask it out. I could do a whole mess of things. I could, you know, put blue you know, sky up there, etc. But I'm lazy. And what we do professionally is I'm just going to increase the video size because it's high enough def and just move the mic literally out of the shot. So I hit play, make sure that it doesn't show up again. Yay. That was the quickest solution on the planet to get rid of the microphone. Okay. Hey, we're practical people. 
Next question, how do we get rid of, the, what do we deal with these feet? Now, this gets into a question. If a buffalo is sitting in this tall grass, would you see his feet? Think about that for a second. Well, the simplest solution, I'll show you. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm done. My buffalo's in the grass. <laughs> Wasn't that a good solution, everyone? Okay, what if I need to move my buffalo farther back in the grass? Okay. Well, how do I fix this then? How do I get grass to cover up his feet if, you know, you know, I need to have him a little bit farther back in the shot? Well, basically, the grass here is what I want to use. So I'm going to make a duplication. Select the video of the grass. Edit, duplicate, Command D if you... I'm going to put one of them at the top, temp temporarily hiding my buffalo. So I basically have a sandwich. I got video of the grass, the vid video of the bison, and I've got the grass in the background. And now I'm going to make another mask. On the top layer. Voila. Now, because this video is exactly the same as the background, frame for frame, providing I don't move it either in the timeline or move it up, down, right, left, and because that is a mask, I can also play with the feathering to give it a little softer edge there. So you can just sort of see his feet through the grass. And I could also play with him, move him down a hair. Now by doing that feathering, you can see that that's a little bit, not a bad little cheat there. If we hit play, there's our buffalo. Now because our grass is, all the, I did all the way across, it looks like the last frame, I still have the mic in there. That's why I increased the size of the uh, outer video first. So when I duplicated it, I could. There we go. Anyhow, so the other thing I can do, and this is one of the points of green screen work, is I can like duplicate my bison, and make a herd of them. Now, of course, to make it real more realistic, we can change the size of them. Move farther back. I can then Take this, flip it. Whoops, don't. Gotta make sure you grab the right handles to do that trick. Not the mask handles, come on. There we go. This, the scaling handles, there we go. No, missed it again. There we go. Now, realistically speaking, even though this is only a very short 15 seconds, uh, the idea being, of course, that you would have like, you know, the your bison moving for 15, 20 minutes worth of nodding its head and things like that, and then you would use different sections of the video on your duplicates. But because you do all the key work, key framing, masking and stuff with the entire footage, 
you can then use any portion of it you want and just keep duplicating the poor little guy you know as much as you want oops that's probably a little too small for that But this is what we do in this day and age, for example, for big sports scenes, stadiums, and things like that, is we'll have like 100 people up in the stands, have them jump up and down for a while, you know, give it, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then we'll stop, have them rearrange themselves, change their clothes a little bit, move to a different section, put that section in, and repeat until we have a full stadium of people. Of course, they now do make, you know, 3D animation of people doing that too, so we don't have to use real people, but... Something about real people doing it. But this is how you take one shot of a buffalo and turn it into an entire herd of buffaloes. Okay? But I hope you saw the problem solving I went through. Just a little step by step. Once again, focus on the simplest, you know, one problem at a time. Do not try to solve everything simultaneously. And make sure you get that one fix and then move on to the next one. Okay, questions so far. As you can see, as I'm waiting for anybody to answer, um, and it, by the way, if you don't want to type something, feel free to turn on your microphone and ask it uh, as well. You know, the basic concepts and tools of doing uh, green screen work or any keying work is pretty straightforward. It's not as hard as all that, but it's getting it right, making it look right. That's the real art form of this, and it takes a lot of practice. Okay, so don't beat yourselves up, people, if it takes you time to do this. It takes all of us time to do this. And it takes a lot of practice as well. Now, I do tell people, it doesn't have to be a true chroma key green, by the way. You can go out and buy a green sheet. Honest to God, buy yourself a cheap green sheet, pin it to your wall, and shoot yourself. It's a great way to practice. If you do live here in L.A., you know, and other places in the world, I'm sure nowadays, and you can mail order, I'm sure, through the internet, is they actually sell paint. I've seen people buy a bucket of paint of that green, and they paint the one wall of their garage, inside of their garage, and turn it into their mini sound stage. You know, all these things are very available. They also make pop-up, you know, people sell those uh, green things in various sizes for not a lot of money. But obviously, you know, it's cheaper if you're just practicing to go ahead and buy yourself a sheet. It will work and stuff, and it's a good starting point. Okay, people, thoughts, questions, ideas, anything from the you guys? So quiet tonight. So anyhow, you know, now one of the more common things that we do or probably the most common thing is we do a sound stage. Now this one does have sound. Hey everybody and welcome to live online. This <coughs> Sorry. This is probably the most common sort of thing of green screenshot. This is what's known as a talking head. It is what we deal with the most in, uh, thank you, uh, Okay, now the question's popped up, even though I jumped ahead. Okay, backing up to our buffalo. You know, would I have to key out the feet? I would probably use a mask, but then again, it's like, is it natural f to see their feet at a certain level? And in this shot, with the in the grass and stuff, I would say not. I would say you barely ever see their feet. So you have to make judgment calls. But yes, you sometimes do have to go in and key and mask out you know, the, um, yeah, we could put some more grass in there. I would definitely put some more grass for this guy in the background just to hide him and stuff. Like I said, we're not going for professional quality here. I'm trying to sh <laughs> just demonstrate stuff. But anyhow, getting back to the blue screen here. So the biggest challenge in this sort of uh, situation is quite literally 
How do you make this interesting? Well, for, first and foremost, we can add a more interesting background. So with that video, we would start by, once again, effects, key, key light, use my little eyedropper. And simply by doing that, we have now a more interesting background. I'm going to turn off the sound so it doesn't bug us. Now from that, as always, we'd sit there and then change, the, go to the mask, remask. E, that's pretty nasty. Let's play with those blacks. Much better. Still having issues down here, but I will live with it for the time being. Oh. It doesn't look good after all. Have to increase the getting there. Like the edge on them. Shrink it down. 0.6. And that's not bad. So from that, how do we make this more interesting? Well, already you've seen probably a million times, you have these things called lower thirds, which are basically little text snippets. Now the thing about a lower third is, of course, obviously you don't want it on the screen all the time. And there's a whole, you know, do you animate it coming on? What do you do with it? Fade it on, fade it off. So for example, we would start like, let them start talking. There we go. Under position, keyframe that, go over one second. I'm holding down the shift key so I get a straight line. And we end that. So we look at the animation. Now you don't want to keep that on the screen all the time. So I think a simple fade out opacity key on the keyboard. Now the other thing I can do with this is actually play with the keyframes here. I'll have it fade as it comes in. It's subtle because it only is a few seconds, but again, it adds a little bit more interest on there. And then I go F9 for easy ease. Make it a little smoother. Not too shabby. And then I would play with the length and stuff. Then I would take that, of course. And say what else? Well, one of the things I do, I'm not sure I got this to you because it was just too freaking big, but there's a thing called a video wall, which has a specially made animation. I'm going to put it behind him. It is this big. Proportionally speaking, this is 3,500 3, pixels by 240 tall. And the reason I do that is literally. So I can actually do the, what I just did with his name. Is start this in the background like this. Go position. Start at the beginning. Keyframe it. Go to the very end. Too much. And just have it move all the way across. So now when I look at this. See how much more interesting that is now? It's not just a talking head. It adds a lot more life to it, a lot more interest. It allows you to do other things with it. And there's the loop in real time. So these are the sort of things that we can do to make things a little bit more interesting, nicer. Just take these things. I mean, I could have just easily have done opacity on his name 
at the beginning, but having it move and fade up at the same time. Like you barely even see that fade in. But it's just those little touches and then fade out. I was probably not on the screen long enough to really read properly though, so of course I would sit there and go to lower thirds, go to my keyframes. Remember the letter U is open your keyframes. I'll just slide this over for a few extra seconds. Give it more reading time. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Yeah, that's feels a lot more smooth for the time to read and stuff. And I'm having the video wall in the back moving the opposite direction just for difference between his name coming in on one side. So again, it's just a quickie little way of doing things. But this is a very, very common, done a lot, more closer to a lot of things that people will, if you get into this, have you doing because obviously particularly with youtube channels and stuff you know i'm sure you've all seen the zoom green screen work you know but you look like a ghost it's terrible edges and stuff i mean it's acceptable for something for free but remember the uh, weathermen never look quite look right it's not a really good green screen you know what we're trying to do here is add more life to it and make it look a lot better Obviously, if this was more high-res video and stuff, we would be doing a lot better as well. Because there's more pixels to play with. It also slows down your computer a tremendous amount as well. But like I said, this is how you make something more interesting. Adding these extra layers and stuff. Okay. So how are we doing here? Any questions or anything so far? This is, is this making sense to everyone? Now, normally I have a lot more other green screen footage. Get my stopper dancing guy there. No, Max, I am showing this just because so many students always ask me about green screen. Because it is a very important, but you do not, and I want to repeat this, do not have to use video or green screen in your final thing. Using still images is perfectly acceptable. Okay, as a matter of fact, my biggest complaint with uh, final projects, people who do video, is they don't do enough After Effects work with it. And uh, one thing I did not show you guys was obviously, uh, obviously, uh, were the really bad final projects. I once had a student who literally turned in, he put his, his phone or camera, I'm not sure what he was using at the time, outside his car window and drove around the block and turned that in. No After Effects work whatsoever on it, whatsoever. There was truly really no After Effects work like at all? Nope. Now I've had some students do, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like, oh, come on, cut me a break here. I've got to grade something. The other thing is I had another student once do something very similar, but only they did. They basically put a filter on every five seconds. It was just filter after filter after filter. It's like no rhyme or reason. They're just randomly picking things. It's like, you know, please put a little effort into this. You know, I want to meet you halfway and give you a good grade, but, you know, I do want to, you know, have. Now, I'm not going to spend all the time green screening this one, but I just want to demonstrate. This is another green screen, uh, some more footage. Uh, you'll notice that there's little these little light green dots, again, for tracking. And also this whole flag here with the Y and stuff, other tracking. But this is a really tricky green screen. You can't just use it once, uh, mainly because she's so close to that green screen. You can see that there's green on her coat, on her face, and things like this. For something like this, we would actually do a series of masks. So I duplicate out of these layers. And I'm going to do this, just do this real dirty like. So the first one, we'd like take out the face. So we have that. The next one, and to probably use, really use the pen tool. Make sure outside of the tool. And then finally, I'd on the final one, I do the rest of her. Okay. 
and also I've got some my eighth points there. So all together that makes up the entire thing. But that allows me to, by breaking up into smaller chunks, is I can use the key light filter and various tools. And I really do need a background on that, or I'm not going to see what I'm doing. Oh, let's use the red background again. So I by breaking up into smaller chunks, and yes, this is time consuming to do this. So once again, the effects, key light. Oh, joy. I clicked on the wrong thing. Let's try that again, Eric. There we go. Eyedropper. And finally, the third and final part. Now I would go in and play with the alpha channel over each part of these things in order to make sure I get all the lighting and everything um, you know, correct for each section. Because adjusting, particularly with a white, somebody wearing white, you know, obviously I would have to sit here and play with each part of this. You can see how much trouble I'm already in. This is where, like I said, this is where it really becomes an art form. Because the settings and all this are just slight enough different enough. You can already see I'm having issues here. You can already see my problems and whatnot just to give you an idea. But because but because it is broken up into now normally I would spend more time rather than this crude square that I created for this mask, I would actually, you know, trim between her head and her eyes to make sure all the lighting was right. But you can see, you know, how time consuming this can suddenly become. Not to mention because I didn't play it forward, I didn't see that this mask needed to be bigger. Like so. As the camera moves and stuff. But it gives you a crazy idea of how long this could really, yeah, as Max points out in the uh, chat group, it really annoys when you see so much green reflected in people's face. It's time consuming to really get that out. It really does take a long time to balance everything out and go in. You can also see that my blackness is having issues because I didn't get all the uh, masks and stuff. There are various tools. I, like I said, this is an introduction to green screens. Basically, you want to use the, the bias tools and various other tools down here to get in and to figure out. Because what you do is you select a color and then it tries to cancel out. And I'm on the, of course, I'm on the wrong freaking layer. That's why it wasn't working. I do not need a green screen on the background. Let's start at the top here. There we go. Hmm. Play with the 
screen balance. Play the game. Ooh, not too much. Yeah, I'm having a little. This is. I threw this particular video clip in because it is such a pain in the ass to do, just to demonstrate that. This is why you need the 16 week course to solve all these issues and stuff. And I haven't even begun to touch all these other tools. You know, because it just takes, you know, it takes a long time to really do this right. But the core is, is, is center is very simple. This is also why we had split the, uh, you know, After Effects class into A and B. Because there's just so much to cover and stuff. So, again, if you really want to get into this, I do recommend the other classes at Santa Monica College. This will just get you started. Also, the chapter in the book has a very good, you know, a brief description of dealing with this as well. So it will get you going and stuff. It's weird that it's not quite right. Ooh. Yeah, that would do it. Did I forget? Yeah, I forgot the cue to fix this. There we go. That's why she was so screwed up. I missed that layer entirely. That's where she was having issues. There we go. There we go. That's much better. And you can't even tell, really tell except for the <laughs> that one scene where the mask doesn't fit. Whoops. My bad. That's why you got to keep playing, you know, moving these things forward. I've had students spend like hours fixing the first frame. They move it like five frames forward and they discovered everything changed. Like that beautiful hole I just put into that footage. So... <laughs> Again, it's practice, getting used to it, playing through it, troubleshooting the issues. And yes, professionally speaking, these crazy jigsaw puzzles are sometimes what it takes to, you know, f solve the issues that we have. Again, I'm not doing a very good job of this one at the moment. that issue. There we go. Put it back together again, and then I'd have to go back in and fix all the tracking points. The reason why that we need so many tracking points is you never are sure which one you're going to have to grab. And also there are different shapes and things like that to help you. Because notice the camera's pushing in and rotating around her. So this is a really tricky move and stuff. So that's why they have all those weird tracking points for you. So what do you guys think? Sorry there is no handout for this because obviously you can see it's too visual. I can't, I've never figured out a way to do this very easily. But it comes down to the basic things of choose what your background color you're going to remove to make an alpha channel. Once you have that, go into your screen mask. Adjust your black and white to make sure you have a nice crisp one. You can also soften the edges, screen grow, all these other do to help you get various other choices. You keep jumping back and forth. I don't know anybody who gets this perfect the first time. Yeah. See, I haven't, and you, don't be afraid to keyframe these things as well. As your actor and actresses move, which you did originally in screen mat. Wrong layer, Eric. On the top of the head. This one. There we go. May look different than where you started from. We may need to increase the brightness there. And stuff. It's not looking too bad. More space. But because I'm overlapping, you know, three different sections here, but they're all the same footage, they blend perfectly. The audience will never see the difference. 
slow at getting it together. But you can see even, you know, I'm doing this quick and dirty, but it's still taking me time to do it. Okay. So what do you guys think? See, you're so quiet again. All right. It's coming up on 8.30. This looks like a good time to take our half 15-minute break or so. So let's go ahead and take a break here. We'll let this run. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video.